what is up everybody so coming to you today with the uh, couple what's next we're gonna do the what's next on the mean machine Aegis Kavliowskis former world title challenger and also Anthony Yard former world title challenger I'm doing both of these guys together because neither one of them are top 10 guys but they are um, they're right around the top 10 they're floating around the top 10 and they both main evented uh, cards last Saturday the 12th um, you know and they're both on ESPN plus um, these are two guys that you know really had good ass fights last year but because they hadn't done much coming in um, you know they both fought big names uh, Kavliowskis fought Terrence Crawford and then Anthony Yard fought um, Sergey Kovalev and they both came up short uh, by knockout but man they put on good fights and it's almost like because neither one of them are big names they've kind of been forgotten which is sad because uh, they seriously can make a case to be top 10 fighters you can argue for both of them I just um, I have them just out so let's start with the mean machine he just Kavlyowski welterweight 147 um, he returned to action took on Michael Zuski and actually had to rally uh, to win um, to win on uh, on Saturday um, he was down um, he was down uh, on the scorecards and uh, on two of the three judges scorecards he was losing the fight and uh, um, and the he ended up stopping Zuski um, and ended up winning by TKO in the eighth round. So it was kind of a come from behind rally uh, uh, TKO victory. And, um, you know, he stayed back in the mix. You know, he's not really rated too high after the knockout loss last year. I think the WBC uh, might be his highest ranking. Like he's floating around like number seven in that area or whatever. But, um, you know, it's a guy to look out for. But the only thing working against. Uh, uh, well, let's ask a question. What's next for Aegis Kavlyowski, the Mean Machine? Well, you know, he, um, we don't know. He's probably just going to stay busy and stay active and try to work himself back into some kind of an eliminator. Because the thing is, is um, the only guy in the top 10, and that includes the three-way tie for 10th right now, um, and not including Jesse Vargas, who uh, was in the top 10, the only guy in the top 10 that uh, that doesn't fight for the PBC is Terrence Crawford. So, and he already fought Terrence Crawford, and he should have knocked Crawford down. Crawford rallied, stopped him last December. Um, you know, so I, I like Aegis Kavlyowski. He's a tough, grinder-type fighter. Um, but, you know, because he fights for top rank, and because he's kind of high-risk, low-reward after that performance against Crawford, He's probably going to get avoided, so Bob Arum needs to work hard, try to get him back into some kind of an eliminator, title eliminator, get him back in the ring um, as quick as possible, maybe January, February area on one of the undercards on ESPN, and like I said, uh, some kind of an eliminator to move up the ladder and either the WBC or the WBO and try to force uh, him into, uh, you know, some kind of title fight at some point, maybe towards the end of next year, he can get himself into a final eliminator or luck out and fight somebody in the top 10 but you know he's a dangerous guy he just it's gonna take it's gonna be somewhat of a long road to work back in but he's got to keep winning so congrats on the victory and that's uh that's the what's next on Aegis Kavlyowski let's switch over to Anthony Yard now um the light heavyweight contender former world title challenger um he returned and took on some unknown guy named Doc Spellman he scored a sixth round TKO in that one that's his uh, second consecutive win this year. He won back in February. He's now won twice since the loss to Sergey Kovalev in August of last year. And a great performance and a great fight by Yard. Um, he was really outworking Kovalev about halfway through. I had him winning the fight. Um, looked like he had Kovalev really hurt in the seventh, but you know Kovalev grinded it out and ended up stopping him in the um, in the eleventh round, but. You know, Yard had never been 11 rounds before. He never even fought anybody even close to as good as Kovalev. And, you know, he left it all out there. He got stopped, but he fought his ass off. The guy is 20-1 um, and one with 19 knockouts. I mean, he really is, in my opinion, talent-wise, probably one of the better light heavyweights, and he's going to 
just climb back up on that horse and and push forward um you know the cool thing about yard is there's options at 175 um does he go after one of the big dogs uh in his next fight i don't know he's ranked number five by the wbo maybe he can work himself into some kind of eliminator um he's like number seven in the wbc you know um i think it's possible he put on a good performance he's got a good knockout ratio he's a guy people want to see fight so maybe 2021 needs to be his year to really get himself back into that title picture maybe his next fight can be a final eliminator to get right back in to a world title fight maybe in the second half of next year we'll see what happens but um that's it on the two on on these two former world title challengers not top 10 guys but they're close and they both main evented and stayed busy last saturday september 12th all right guys that's the what's next on the mean machine Ejus kavlyowski and hard-hitting anthony yard the light heavyweight contender hope you guys enjoyed this true boxing you've been hit with the truth